One UI 5 is here for the S22 series phone, the S22 Ultra. And I only got one thing to say about that. Go Astros. <laughs> Before I turn too many people off, I'll get back to this. But I'm excited. We just won the World Series. So, S22 Ultra is also a winner. Now, the S22 Ultra is on the same level as the Pixel 7 series phones. It's rocking Android 13. So, the phone has leveled up. It is now on the same level playing field, and you can probably expect we'll continue the level of excellence that they've put out over the last year, year and a half or two, with those monthly security patches, which I have totally been digging. And I think most people out in the tech world and also the consumer space are really starting to expect that from Samsung. It's something that's really nice and refreshing because old Samsung was not like that at all. And I still got to point to the phone and say, four years of operating system updates, five years of security patches. Now, I get that it comes a little bit after what you get with the Pixel phone. But that's not to bring any discredit to the Samsung phone at all because it still gives you four years. I, this phone came out beginning of 2022. So we got the S22 series, 22 plus, 22 ultra. They came out. We got Android 12, which, oh my gosh, thank goodness that nightmare is over. And there's not a whole lot of excitement here. This is probably the least exciting software upgrade that we've had in quite a while because I like to call it Android 12 plus. There was a lot of stuff that was instituted and a lot of nice things that they did with Android 12 when it came out, but boy, was it problematic. And Samsung had some, it had its own fits with it. It had problems with it and they could largely blame Google for that. So what we've seen here in the beta is we've had a longer beta than usual. It took a little bit longer to get the finished product out to the phone, but it's here. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of a rundown on some of this stuff. So we're gonna flip around take a look at the phone here and let's continue talking about the features. So this is straight from Android Central, some fantastic guys over there. I used to write a bunch of articles with their community review team before I ever started making my own videos. So I'm gonna have a link to this article down in the, in the description so you can come read all this stuff. There's not a lot of big fundamental changes here. A couple tweaks here and there, but largely it's the same One UI experience that you can, that you can expect from what you had with One UI 4. Not a whole lot here. And it says, you know, Samsung has to be cognizant of making broad changes to UI, just like I talked about with stability. They're the largest Android manufacturer. So everybody looks to this like iPhone users look to their phones when they get a new product from Apple. So not a whole lot has changed here. Just some little subtle things here and there. Uh, all in on Material U. This adds some more background, some more colors, some more changes and stuff to the interface. And I think that that's a good thing. The biggest visual changes has to do with Material U integration through the interface, including calling menu, volume picker, and all the first party apps. So that's nice to have that. New backgrounds, like I said. Notification management, straightforward. So a couple little changes here, a few tweaks to the notification panel on One UI 5. So Google actually introduced a task manager on the notification shade, but that's not available on the on One UI 5 because the the, not the, the notification shade goes all the way down to the bottom, but this helps for reaching things, especially on a big, large screen like the S22 Ultra, makes for better one-handed use. So I kind of like that change. No real changes to the media player. Now, one thing that I want to do, do want to talk about is they did get rid of Bix uh, Bixby routines. So they've changed it and it's now called modes. So this is kind of like a beginning of the end for maybe disintegration of Bixby. But now if you press and hold, it's in your, it's in your, drop down notification shade, your quick settings. It's all modes and routines now. So it's no longer called Bixby or Bixby routines, but you can go in and you can set stuff up. The stuff you have already set up should work. I mean, I've got routines here already set up. So that's effectively what it is. They changed the name and maybe that's for the best. Maybe they're just gonna go all in with Google Assistant stuff and not worry about it anymore. Uh, they made some tweaks to the camera, camera interface, subtle changes there. Nothing really big to talk about. Uh, got all of the filters in one place, uh, easy to access that stuff. And the best part is One UI serves recommendations for the text. So it does pull text out of photos now. So if you've got a photo pull up with text, it'll give you the option to pull the text out of it. So that's nice. Multitasking easier than ever. Google made it harder to <laughs> access split screen, which they did. But now you can do a new gesture, swiping upward with two fingers from the bottom of the screen it automatically pulls up split screen. I believe you have to turn it on though. Yeah, see, it's, it's not doing anything. You have to go into the labs. And I believe you have to turn it on. So whoop, we'll go to the labs. Advanced features. We'll go to labs. Here we go. Multi-window for all apps. I think that's it. Oh, swipe for split screen. There we go. 
So to change so to change the split screen view, swipe up with two fingers from the bottom of the screen in portrait view or from the side of the screen in landscape view. And that's supposed to put it in split screen mode. So that's kind of cool. See, there we go. Ta-da, it worked. That's pretty neat. So that's nice. And some other stuff that they added. Easy to stack widgets with the same size. Just drag a widget onto an existing widget on the home screen. So that's cool. You can now add individual contacts over I do not disturb settings. You can change language preferences for individual apps, which is nice. A nifty addition if you're bilingual, so you can have different languages set up for different apps that you open. So that's pretty cool. A unified dashboard for security and privacy settings. You'll find a notification settings button at the bottom of the notification pane that lets you manage your notification settings. So that's nice. Digital well-being dashboard has been refreshed and is in line with Android 13. Connected devices pages gives you an overview of all the features that are designed to work with other devices. So it shows you what they work with. And the media output button within the notification pane now shows Chromecast. So that's nice. And One UI 5 lets you set several timers at once. Hooray. I'm really excited about this. I set timers all the time. I'm always forgetting things. So that's cool. And yeah, here's a list of stuff that we're going to get. These are the Galaxy devices getting One UI 5 in November. So the Fold 4 all the way down to the A33. So if you've got one of these phones, you should ex or one of these phones or tablets, you should expect to see it in November this month. And then the rest of these devices are going to get it in December. So the Z Fold 2, Z Flip 5, G S20, all the way down to the A51, A32, the Galaxy Jump. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, honestly. And then in January, these guys right here are going to get Android 13 One UI 5. So Samsung is very dedicated and seems like pretty determined to get this rolled out to pretty much everything in their active portfolio over the last couple of years into the beginning of the year. So that's really... Really nice, really exciting stuff. And One UI 5, folks, here we have it. So that's all I've got. And again, go Astros. <laughs> I'm just going to plug that one last time. I've been here my whole life, 38 years now that, that I've been on this earth. And I've been an Astros fan since day one. And, you know, it took us a long time, a real long time to get our first World Series. 2017, Harvey happened that year. It was a great thing that happened. And then the whole cheating scandal and all that really left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. So this one, it was a great sigh of relief to get it over. But anyway, glad we won. Glad everybody who's got the Samsung S22 series phone is a winner with Android 13, One UI 5. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of big changes. Like whenever you use it on the day-to-day -day basis, Samsung goes through great lengths to make sure that it looks and it operates and it feels exactly the same. And that's largely the approach that Apple takes with the iPhones because stability is king. 2022 didn't exactly have a lot of stability. 2020, 2019, all, there hasn't been a lot of stability anywhere lately over the last couple of years. So it's really important that every time you pick up your phone, it looks and it feels and it operates the way that you expect it to and the way that it's supposed to. And Samsung has done that demonstrably well very, very well, better than I think Google even did this last year. And it's really funny. A lot of people really like the stock UI. They really like stock Android, the experience that you get with your Pixel phones. But in reality, like in reality, <laughs> there's only a couple million, maybe Pixel phones sold a year. There's like probably 40, 50 million, maybe more Samsung phones sold every year. There are like so many more millions of Samsung phones out there running one UI's their version of Android 13, because here's what it is. And I probably should have talked about this earlier. One UI is the Samsung user interface. They make it look different. So if you, you see here, we've got One UI, and then let me pull up my Pixel 7 Pro here. And then we've got over here, we've got stock Android. So they look different. They feel a little bit different. It's like wearing two different shoes. Yeah, you might one might be a Jordan 3, one might be a Jordan 4. Yes, it's all Android. But the little touch of velvet that Samsung puts on top of this, they make their own stuff. And a lot of people like to call some of their apps bloatware. And I really think that that's an outdated, archaic term because it's really not. It's their own individualized app. And yes, there might be the same Google app, but everything ties in and it all is just part of the uniform function and feature that we get with One UI. It all feels smooth, fast, responsive, uniform. And it's a good cohesive package. So I give Samsung credit here. I'm glad we're on the same page now. Great to have Android 13. And hopefully you're enjoying the One UI experience. And I hated using Samsung Android phones. Remembering back to the old TouchWiz days 
once we finally got on board with like, I think it was the S8 and then moved into the One UI world, I think maybe it was the S9, maybe it was the S10. I can't remember exactly. There was, there was some gray area there, I think. I would have to go back and do some research, but really that's not important. One UI has been around for about five years now and I like it. I like it a lot. It's probably my favorite version of Android. I like what Google has done. They've really made it their own personal touch with a lot of this stuff. It feels a lot more unique. I never really was a fan of just a very bland, vanilla, boring. <laughs> like there's nothing, it, it just felt like there's nothing to do on the phone. I, it was very much to me like iOS. And so many years people are like, oh, the Pixel is the Android version of the iPhone. And I kind of get that. They were both boring, but the Pixels aren't exactly boring anymore. They've done a lot. They've colored it up. They've spruced things up, done some spring cleaning. I like what they're doing. And that's one great thing about coming here to this channel. I talk about both of them. I love the Pixel 7 Pro. I also love the S22 Ultra. I love my Z Fold 4 that's in my pocket right now. And it's just a great opportunity in the world of tech we're in right now where there's no hate here. If it's a good product, it's a good product. If it's not a good product, it's not a good product. And I think y'all know I call balls and strikes either way. No pun intended for the baseball reference with the World Series. But it's great to have such good hardware with good software that's reliable, performs well, getting supported for up to five years. You can't go wrong. And Samsung, I think, has done a good job here. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please go down to the comment section. I will get back with you, or I'll try my best to. There's so many comments nowadays. I know I don't get to all of them. My intent is there. I try really, really hard to reply to a ton of comments every single day. There are thousands of them a day. Realistically, I can't get to them, but I try my best. So I will say that. I will try to get back to you. If you've got a question, if you don't see me get to it once, leave it again. I'll, I will do my best. And that's what that's the best that I can promise and offer. And if you enjoyed the videos, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Go Astros.